Hi, welcome to another episode of ToddFun.com, where I do what's fun. Today is going to be uh, revisiting an old project I started about a year ago, and that is the uh, frequency uh, counter for the uh, uh, Kenwood uh, 520S um, uh, ham radio. Uh, if you look way back, I'll put links below to the old post in ToddFun, as well as the old video, where I went over uh, the proof of concept that you could... Uh, that you could use an Arduino and a, a few pieces of uh, uh, supporting circuit chips and so forth to actually measure frequency uh, of an old uh, boat anchor style non-display uh, ham radio. So you can just dial in um, and, and know exactly what frequency you're on based on the readings that the, the Arduino will calculate from uh, on outputs on the back of the radio. Now this is designed specifically for a a particular Kenwood, like a uh, this will be in the link below. I don't even remember the model other than it's a 520S, like TS or something like that. But at any rate, um, I'm back at it. It's been a year. I actually, after the proof of concept on the last video, I went and bought the chips that I needed. I got them all on DigiKey, had them all in a box, and then uh, project after project came along and I, I never got back to it. And I've had tons of people ask me to finish it. I'd put enough material in the first video on the first post for anyone to pretty much follow and use. I mean, I put all the sourced all the chips I was going to use and pretty much said this is this is how I'm going to do it so I mean some people did just take and run with that and, and they say they did do it um, or they worked on it, I don't know how successful they were um, so uh, but people are still asking me, they want basically the full circuit, they want to know how do I wire it up, what's the circuit diagram, what's the code Essentially, so they can just go build it themselves um, you can buy this product. People built such products, um, and they sell them online already. But that's that's not the fun of this. The fun of this is taking an Arduino and some simple components and building it yourself. Um, and I will put links to some of those uh, products that people sell in the show notes. So if you want to buy, I'm not going to sell this, but you can buy something similar to this, built entirely differently on the pick chips and stuff like that, uh, for not that much money. Um, that do hook up to these radios and and do do this very thing. Um, some of them are over featured, some of them aren't exactly specific. So, so I, I, I'll put all that information and you can just mow through it and decide what you want to do with that. But if you want to build what I'm going to build, then just uh, follow along, follow what I do, um, do it exactly like I do, and you'll, you'll probably be successful. And I'll be testing this um, on my friend's uh, H, uh, on my friend's uh, Kenwood uh, high frequency uh, transceiver here at the end. Uh, so the, where we left off is is being able to amplify those uh, smaller signals. And what I did is I looked at other people's stuff in the community online and saw what they were using to amplify these uh, signals from these radios. And I said, well, okay, you know, why reinvent the wheel? They've had success with these um, circuit components and chips to amplify these signals. So I, I just ordered some of those. Um, and they turned out to be like TV amplifiers or amplifier chips that are very high frequency they can work up in the in the 40 megahertz range um, and uh, they're designed for amplifying small TV signals and hence they're they're really quality components for this and they're not that expensive and once again I'll, they'll, they'll be in the bomb of this product and so those are, that's the first thing I'm going to test do they work well with these high frequencies which I'm sure they will and then put it all together and uh, we'll do each little component at a time build a little case for it um, take it over to my friend's house, plug it in, and, and see if the Arduino and these supporting circuits see starts showing him his frequency. And if there's a little calibration involved, I might have to do that, but I wouldn't think there would be. Um, and I'm still iffy on exactly what modes do what and whether I need to subtract or add the different uh, measurements. And, and I'll, I'll figure that out if, I, if, if it comes to that. Um, or if it just works, then it just works. So let's get going. Well, we're having some good luck with the uh, amplification circuit. I'm kind of calling it a pre-amplifier, though there isn't really any other. Well, there's some essentially some amplification concept going on uh, when, I, when I when I use a NAND gate, but <clears throat> that's just the nature of how that switches. So here's what we got going so far. Um, I do have a circuit built up and tested, and we'll cover that. And I do have my lowest the lowest signal that I have to read actually functioning. So we'll just swing over here and we'll take a look at the first document I want to show is essentially getting into what am I doing this is going to be the display of course 
This is a block diagram of the uh, of the original DG-5 that you could buy when the radio was brand new uh, back in the 70s maybe or 60s I don't know um, and this was a digital display but it was all um, components there was no microcontrollers or nothing like that um, so passive or however you want to call it you know how they build radios at the time um, but what's 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 critical is that I have to read these three signals and I know that uh, the lowest one is 0.2 volts peak to peak because I measured that off of his radio and that's got to come in granted I got to repeat this logic in here but that's not a problem with microcontrollers um, then the next one is the 0.4 volt peak to peak and the 0.5 volt peak to peak so these voltages regardless of their frequencies have to be amplified up at high enough to at least trigger a NAND gate okay um, and I'll, I'll probably feed in I, I salvage this. This will be my three inputs because this is the type of jacks on the back of the of the radio, and I'll just feed that right in to a board that will have some amplifiers. So, what are we doing for amplifying? Well, we'll come over to the next one. Okay, so I got this chip, um, the NE592 video amplifier, and it will amplify uh, 40 megahertz just fine uh, for small signals. It is uh, got a configuration where you can control the gain, and it does have the ability to, to even go higher with some configurations higher than, than I need. I only 40 megs is fine for me though, and so I should have no problem amplifying the signal, provided it can uh, at least, if I can do it in one stage, you know, amplify from that lowest. That's what I'd like to do, uh, but I'll need three of these because I got three signals. I don't want to try and multiplex the amplification stages. I just want to have three of these chips um, from on semiconductor. Uh, doing my amplification of each line. Uh, so I got that. And I got the idea from, I think I presented this in the first video, I got the idea from a person who made a general frequency counter. Just a general. You, know, you could put in digital analog and a whole bunch of different ranges and amplitudes and stuff like that. Now what's nice about this circuit that he shared is that he can put in fairly small signals, not probably as small as I'm combating, um, but he can amplify them up more than enough uh, to uh, put them either uh, through these NAND gates to the to a counting pin on his. I think he's using an, uh, an Atmel that he hard coded. He coded himself. He's not using like an Arduino or anything, but essentially the same thing though. Um, but he's powering it from five volts. Um, all these chips, and if he happens to have uh, too high a frequency for his chip, he can do a divide by 16, which he's using that same uh, ripple counter. I got the idea from him for essentially all of this, except for mine can't work like this. I don't want to divide by 16, um, and I want to have three separate circuits. And but I could probably use each. I can use one of these. I only need to use one of these NAND gates for each one of my uh, channels. Um, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to do like he's trying to do here with with his selection pins and stuff like that. I don't need anything like that. Uh, but I would like to get it to run off of 5 volts instead of um, this chip is actually made to run off of uh, it's optimized between plus and minus 6 volts um, and he's done that by bringing a signal in I, I'm going to match this 1k and this uh, I'm probably going to use a uh, just a 2 microfarad, a 0.2 microfarad um, input cap um, and then he's doing a divide up here uh, of that input signal and he's kind of floating it between uh, the two input pins um, uh, pin two, uh, pin one, and and pin eight, uh, and then uh, he's uh, getting his five volts through here and dividing that off here and going into what would be the minus six, but it isn't, and and so he's he's, and I did try this. I did hook it up like this, and I couldn't get any of this to work with my signals. My signals are either too low, or this just isn't right, or something. I don't know, but it would not touch my low signals. So I had to scrap this and change this up a little bit. Um, I did get this working in a different configuration based on the recommendations uh, from the from the data sheets. Uh, so I did get mine working, but I had to do a plus and minus six volt, and we'll look at that and how it's working in my circuit here in a second. Um, and of course, you know we've already tested the ripple thing, which we'll do again today, and just to show that that still works. After we do a straight count, we'll do a, a divide by eight ripple count. Um, and of course I've got the uh, the NAND gates now, these Schmidt NAND gates um, plugged in and working too. So we'll see that too. Uh, so I had to change the circuit up for my low signals because I wanted to, I had to get more gain out of it. And so 
Though his should have had plenty of gain, um, I just think the fact that you're not using plus or minus 6 volts is my problem. I may not be able to get around it. I may have to provide a separate plus or minus 6 volts. I don't know that yet. You will we'll all know that later. <laughs> uh, so this was an example of how to do the variable gain where you can adjust this adjustable resistor and use this video amplifier chip to uh, essentially control your gain. Well, as I found out, even with this, a maximum a gain that is a dead short between pins well this is the 14 pin version I've got the 8 pin version um, but a dead short between in this case 4 and 11 is maximum gain which is still still flaky and not working quite right not getting high enough to trigger those uh, NAND gates um, so I had to change things up a little bit and kind of kind of just experiment and see where I was getting better signals and not of course I did come into my 1k and my my straight and uh, coupling uh, coupling capacitor um, so that 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 just stays that's fine that doesn't hurt nothing uh, and then these were the the two uh, resistors you saw here resistors here but they had 51k and that just uh, was just uh, too much and so I tried 1k's and that didn't work and then when I, I started realizing uh, through toying around that if I could get this one higher than this one I could tweak my gain up a little bit even when I was at my low uh, 0.2 uh, volts peak to peak, I could still get it up high enough to trigger uh, the NAND gate if if I used a 5.6K and a, and a 1K. Strange, if I go a little higher, the amplification goes off, and if I go a little, uh, uh, if I change, if I go a little lower, it also starts to, to, to drop off. So it's kind of a sweet spot at 5.6K. And then the 1K here, uh, just it didn't really matter what that was. It seemed to pretty much stay stable. Likewise, it didn't really matter if this was here or not. The second side of this channel it just didn't really matter. I'm only tapping. I'm coming in off of one side, and I'm coming off of this side is all I'm using it for. Um, these caps also didn't seem to make any difference. Um, this resistor did, however. That 1K was pretty, uh, had to be 1K. And, of course, this had to be pretty close to 2. 0.2 microfarads and you couldn't go off by much but I did go up and down um, by, by about two times and divide by two and it didn't make much difference so I just left it at 0.2 it was recommended anyway um, and I, I of course I redid this drawing with my 8 pin configuration uh, just because I used a different pin out for the 8 pin device and I did do minus 5 and plus 5 and if I did not do that I was not able to amplify the 0.2 volt peak to peak sine wave that I know I have to amplify without doing multiple stages of any kind uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I would really like to, to convert this to be a, just 5 volts and 0 and I will try that again now that I kinda got this in the sweet spot I might be able to take uh, to go back to this individual's idea and come up with something that would just changes it enough to where I can still trigger these NAND gates um, with uh, and so and essentially can I still get the amplification I need uh, I couldn't use any of that though, um, but we'll see. I, I don't know if if I can. I want to. If I can't, I'll just leave it like this because this is working, and I'll come up with the plus and minus five volts uh, because I'd like to get the project done. Uh, and the last thing we can go at uh, would be just looking at things um, over here. So we'll take a look at the circuit. I'll bring you down. And I can even zoom you in a little bit. So there's essentially the circuit, and that is just as drawn and laid out just as uh, I have the uh, 0.2 volt peak to peak coming in here, and then I've got uh, the red wire here is my minus 5 volts, and then I got plus 5 on this red wire, uh, and then of course the input and output the resistors that I showed you in the diagram. This gray wire comes over to the NAND gate. The NAND gate is it's more than enough signal to come into the NAND gate and come off this yellow wire and the yellow wire goes over to the Arduino and like before is counting nice clean uh, waves so let's uh, look at the signals that we're using so that you know what that looks like there's the 5.5 .5, uh, megahertz and it is uh, dialed down I've got this turned all the way down to 0.2 I've actually got the minus 20 dB engaged and then I turned it all the way down as low as it goes which is 0.2 volts peak to peak which is exactly the lowest I need lucky me and this is the signal um, on this uh, on my Tektronix 2465 uh, right now I have it on 2.2 volts so we'll bump it up and I guess I have to turn down my gain a little bit here 
there, okay. That's actually lower than 0.2, right? There is 0.2. That's the lowest signal I have to do. But it'll still count, even down to the lowest that my signal generator goes to, it will still count just fine. But that's my test signal. I, I actually have other signals that are a little bit higher, up to almost 1 volt peak to peak. And this does work with that too. If I, uh, if, uh, that's what I was doing earlier, is I was testing that I can go all the way up to 1 volt peak to peak, which is right there, I switched. So I, as long as I can still do that without oversaturating something, then I'm good. And I can, so we can go back to my smallest signal right there, 2 volts peak to peak. Okay, um, and then if you come over here, um, my other Tektronics 2012B, you'll see I have, on, this is actually 0 volts right there at this line. And this is, uh, let's see what the measurements say, I think it's a little over 5 volts, 5.6 volts, and that's a nice square wave that's getting um, created by the uh, Schmidt NAND gates. And in the frequency, it's even counting the frequency for us already. And uh, I'd say lastly is we have uh, plus or minus uh, 5 volts. So we will uh, check the Arduino that it's counting, and then we'll check against the HP up here. And that should be it for this part of the video. So I've loaded up the software and uh, and this is all powered up now. Uh, plus or minus 5 volts coming at the top, signal coming in here and then the Arduino is just sitting on the side here. And we will uh, go over to the laptop now. Okay, so I don't know how clear that is but uh, there we go. We, uh, we see the, it's the same code. I haven't changed the code. I'm not doing divide by 8 right now because I'm not running through the divide by 8 chip. Um, but I'm not counting strong signals either. I'm counting the, the weak signals that are being generated and amplified. So this is proof of concept that I can amplify the lowest uh, uh, frequency at 5.5 megahertz, which is one of the highest frequencies I'll actually have to count with the Arduino. Um, and that's proof of concept. Let's check uh, to see if we're close to 4.4999 with the HP, which is over here warming up. Okay, I got a uh, signal, the exact same signal, directly from the uh, function generator hooked to the HP, so you can see what the function generator was actually outputting. And uh, yeah, it was outputting 0.2 volts uh, volt peak to peak, but this can read that. Um, and it's reading 5.4999975. Uh, so yeah, the uh, amplification circuit is working. Okay, that, uh, that's the proof of concept we needed. I can definitely amplify with a single stage using that video amplifier chip um, and get the signals strong enough uh, to, uh, to trigger the NAND gates. That's good, that's, that's done now. Now the next video is gonna be all three uh, uh, of those signals being able to multiplex into the Arduino, one of them being uh, going through a divide by eight chip, uh, a ripple counter. Uh, that'll be the next video showing that that all kind of works. Uh, because that's the that's the last thing I have to do before boxing it up, really. Uh, well, the display, I guess. I mean, I don't want this thing hooked up to a computer all the time, so I'll have to do a display. Uh, that might take a third video, but oh well. And uh, the, the big thing about the next one is always, is can I get that ripple counter to go up to 40 megahertz? Uh, I don't know if I can. I'm fairly confident the NAND gates will go up to uh, the 40 megahertz, uh, but the uh, noted limit of the uh, ripple counter is 20 megahertz so that's the next thing uh, get it all up get it all ready to work with three with the three uh, signals all multiplexed into the Arduino and the Arduino you know going through and dis displaying the, the three signals frequency counts even if the uh, even if the third one has to stay under 20 megahertz for now proof of concept uh, but we'll see if we can push it and get it all the way up to 40 megs with it being stable then I'm happy with that I don't mind pushing it if it's going help if it can hold it uh, and if not, I have to simply find another ripple counter that can go up to that in higher megahertz. So um, uh, that's no big deal, really. So, okay, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, we'll do those things. Uh, we might have one or two more videos after this, uh, getting it uh, working it with the ham radio. And then this project's done. Hope it's another year. It won't be. <laughs> I'm in on this project. Thanks for joining.